All right, so welcome to The Modern Benoni is No Baloney, part two. You can thank Mr. Ben Simon for that title. And today, uh, we'll just get right to it. Let's jump over to the board. And we'll be looking over lines where uh, white in this position, okay, we'll just remind ourselves of the first few moves. In this pos position, we play C5, just attacking the center. And, okay, they almost always invariably play the move D5, grab a little bit more space. And now we attack the center, not with B5, but with E6. This is what we're looking at today, the modern Benoni. And so, okay, after knight to C3, they're thinking about playing E4, but we can capture first and play D6, and we get sort of to the very starting point of the lecture. And last week, we went over, you know, the very aggressive lines with E4 and F4 and trying to play E5 really early and crush black. So we went over that. And tonight, we're going to go over something a little bit different. We're going to look at lines with e4 and knight f3. Although we will look at one line too where the knight goes somewhere else. But we're basically looking at e4 and knight f3, which, you know, you still have f4 in mind, but you're going to develop your pieces and castle. And then you'll, you'll get on with your, your middle game plans. And in our last lecture, which will be next Monday, we're going to look at lines where white delays playing e4, so such as the Fianchetto variation, and we'll go over a few others. Okay, so we begin with the move e4 tonight, and after g6, it's actually interesting. Um, the classical line begins with knight f3, though recently people have tried to avoid playing this move immediately, and the reason is, in a lot of lines, black will play the move bishop to g4, and take the knight. Uh, just simply put, uh, the bishop actually isn't usually all that great on c8. He often can find himself without a job, especially if white you know, plays a move like h3 before he plays knight f3. It's just hard for him to, to find anything to do. And as we'll, we'll notice, you know, the more games you watch in the Benoni, white has this very common maneuver where the knight heads to c4. And from c4, he puts some pressure on the center, it can be combined with his bishop to attack the d-pawn, you know, and it helps him whenever he wants to play the move e5. So very often, black is trying to play lines with an early bishop to g4, intending to take the knight. However, we'll start tonight with the classical variation, which I think, in general, is a good spot to start whenever you're covering any opening, because the classical variation is normally people develop their pieces and castle, and they do just the most sensible, logical things in the position. And from there, people deviate. And so to understand the deviations, you want to understand what happens if we just play normal moves. OK, I, I develop my bishop. You develop your bishop, and we castle. So this is the classical variation, which, although not super popular now, uh, it has been played recently by uh, Fabiano Caruana. So we will see a game in just a second between Levon Aronian and Caruana that was played just three months ago, uh, which was you know, f for the time of the filming, it's, it's March was the, March 2016 is when the game was played. It was played in the candidates match. So a very important game. And you know, he, he busts out the Benoni. Uh, rookie eight. And in general, this is Black's plan. Often he combines it with moves like knight b to d7. He's really trying to prevent the e5 push. So rookie eight, you know, very normal. And uh, knight to d2. So we see the knight, he's on his journey. White intends to safeguard the center with f3, and the knight goes to c4. This is a typical maneuver for white. And the most popular move here is actually knight to a6. However, Caruana played a different move, so we'll, we'll come right back to that. And the point of this move is to maneuver the knight to c7, when then we're just we're trying to be able to play the move b5, because in the end game, you know, we're trying to push our pawns over here on the queen side. So after you guard your e-pawn, knight c7. And if you immediately go to c4, well then, thanks to my knight here, I have the move b5. Okay, so a4, the typical way of preventing black's counterplay on the queen side. And just to give you an idea of how the main line goes, it's actually interesting because you'll notice this guy doesn't have a very bright future. So the most common maneuver is actually to play b6. And after the knight goes to c4, you know, bishop a6 with the idea of, in many lines, taking this knight. 
So that's also why you can see uh, earlier in the variation, sometimes with the lines where you get to pin the knight and then take it, you can understand, I mean, this, that's what this bishop usually is ending up doing anyway. So that's sort of the, the basic starting point here. And after this move, black has a couple different moves, h6, queen d7. Uh, and so here's sort of the starting point of the, the classical variation. However, I do want to bring your attention to this position and to see what Caruana played in this position here. He played, you know, another very logical move, knight b to d7. Okay, it doesn't get much more logical than that. The knight, you know, almost, almost always goes here. You know, you're just, you're on the e5 square a couple times. White will eventually play f4 and try to play e5. So the knight makes a lot of sense on d7. All right, and in this position, what also is interesting is now Aronian played a sideline. A4 and F4 are you know, very common moves here. He played the new move queen to C2, which also has the benefit of guarding the E pawn. And he has a very specific idea in mind. <laughs> uh, and it's a, it's a very scary class tonight because uh, there's a lot of thunder. I don't know if it picks up on the camera, but Ben Simon, add a bunch of thunder sound effects because it may make it a really scary lecture. Um, Okay, knight to e5 was played. The idea is to play against knight to c4. And you are sort of, sort of encouraging white to go ahead. You say, yeah, go for f4, you know, come get me. And, uh, you know, if f4, you know, we would have seen, you know, is he just going to keep going here, which seems very typical. Was he just going to drop back and, and try to provoke you into it? What was he going to do? But Aronian played this move b3, which is a sideline within this sideline. But Caruana said, oh yeah, I looked at this before. Uh, it does seem a little bit dangerous, so I had to look at it. So even when you, you, know, you play the sideline within the sideline, within sidelines of sidelines, Caruana is still ready and prepared. Like, I mean, it's, he's a hard guy to out-prepare. And the real reason for showing this game has nothing to do with the actual game. It has to do with the press conference. The press conference for this game was so amazing that in the next interview that Caruana did, the first question they asked him was like, oh, tell me about that press conference. How did you feel about that? So, okay, it was an excellent press conference. And what I really liked about it was both players really embodied sort of the, the spirit. Oh, it is raining. Uh, just, just in time. Uh, the spirit of the opening, and it really was how people really think when they're playing in these positions. Because Aronian with white, every move, he was like, yeah, I wanted to sack this, sack this, sack this. And he's like, why are you giving away all your stuff? <laughs> you know? But he's like, because I want to checkmate you. And that's how white feels. Whenever you play the Benoni, they want to checkmate you. That's what they're, you know, I'm going to annihilate you, crush you, wipe you off the board, destroy you. And Caruana, you know, much like a Benoni player, was just, he's a very calm guy in general. And he's like, yeah, here I think, you know, it's aggressive, but I think you're overestimating your attack, and okay, I'm up two pawns, and blah, blah. So it was actually very interesting just to see it, and that's, that's sort of how you have to be. You have to be sort of a resilient defender to play some of these positions, because they do get quite scary. <laughs> it's not for the, the faint of heart, some of these positions. And uh, we'll get to one position here in, in just a minute. Um, but here he had this novelty prepared. Uh, bishop to g4. So, yeah, he already had this, like, ready to go, even though nobody's ever played this. Um, <laughs> but in the couple of games that were played, the move that, that Black has always chosen here is very interesting, and it's, uh, you know, the sort of move that you kind of want to look for in this position. You've got to be sort of a creative, imaginative player if you want to play the Benoni as either side. Uh, G5. And the idea is to maneuver the knight to F4. You're preventing white from playing the move F4. Uh, so something like this has been played in the past, and so I guess Caruana probably had a look at it and decided he wanted to go with something a little bit different. Though this, this, I mean, this obviously is interesting, and the knight goes to f4, and who knows, maybe it's black that's attacking. So, but we go back. All right, bishop g4, this is what he prepared. And uh, he's saying, okay, play f3. You know, he's kind of like provoking f3. And the reason he's probably doing this uh, is we know this bishop is going over here. So if you do put a move like f3 on the board, you are weakening some dark squares. We can imagine in the future, you know, a bishop might be able to jump in here. Uh, and, you know, this bishop is going out, out the other door. So there's, he didn't see any reason to really weaken uh, his position. He's, you know, I'll play f4, you know, at some point. But here he just took, which, as he said in the press conference, should give him just a slight advantage. And, okay, 
he was happy with that. And he's going to play moves like h3, f4, and he's, he's going to go crush, you know, uh, America's, you know, best player. So, okay, so he does it, f4, very scary stuff. You know, we're forced back. And, uh, okay. You know, it's kind of scary if you're <laughs> you new to this. And calmly, after here, okay, he attacks the d6 pawn. And, okay, so the actual, it's beyond theoretical interest, so we, I want to jump to some of the, the real cool part in this position. After here, uh, he's trying to safeguard the e5 square. This actually is an interesting, you know, positional sacrifice that white can often make in these situations. So you do need to be prepared for this. Uh, it's, it's now a well-known idea, so I'm sure both players were you know, not surprised by this. But what did white play in this position? Let's see if we can get the, the audience involved a little bit. Yeah, he played e5. OK, so we, I mean, we basically have to accept this, this sacrifice. And uh, how would you follow up here? Because, OK, if white just takes, then you know, all of our pieces are still great. Um, you know, this, this wouldn't make too much sense. We would just take back. And also, letting us take here probably doesn't make sense either, because now the bishop, once again, has been liberated. So, so f5. And the point of this pawn sacrifice is, well, these two guys now are bad pieces. Hey, Arjun, is that, you got something for me? I got it for Mike. He's not here. Though he might come back. You never know. I'll hold on to it for him in case. Otherwise, I'll steal it. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering, do you want to do dual commentary with me tomorrow? On what? On what? Uh, maybe your game with Darian. Maybe the game you play tonight. So maybe your best game, whatever your best games are. And we'll, we'll talk about it. I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow. You don't know? But, but if you do it, I'll, I'll add a month onto your family membership. <laughs> huh? That's a great deal. All right. All right. All right. All right, so expect, yeah, expect uh, dual commentary with Arjun to come up tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, because otherwise I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so in this position, yeah, we've just sacrificed a pawn to, you know, make black have some bad pieces here. But also you have the e4 square for the white knight. The knight goes to e4. We're thinking about playing f6. And then da 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 checkmate. That's the plan. And that's sort of how, how white typically thinks in these sorts of positions. And I do want to get to one uh, critical point here. So b5, I mean, you have to sort of lash out, break away the center, uh, even though it's, you know, it's a gambit. You need to do something before white starts attacking you. You've got to get some pressure in the center, pressure on the queen side. So he just ignored it. You know, he is not interested in opening up anything on the queen side, even if you win a pawn. Knight to e4. And on cue, the rain is really pouring. <laughs> Can you add lots of rain sound effects and thunder? And I prefer not to. You prefer not to? <laughs> <laughs> you know, make it, make it really scary. Um, OK, so he's, he's thinking here about playing f6. And so after this move, it's actually interesting. So here's, here was the most imp you know, interesting part of the press conference. Uh, in the game, he, he played bishop to c1. But he went over this line. He showed this one line. Oh, I was thinking here, here, here. And he was like, yes, 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 checkmate, checkmate. You know, I, I couldn't see how to stop it. But he, he, in the end, ended up not trusting his intuition. But he could play a combination here. And it's really mostly about planning. I'll give you guys a, a chance. But I put it on, on the newest versions of Komodo and Stockfish. And when you first play this move with white, it's like, oh, black is like crushing you. You know, minus two, minus three. Black is, you know, just winning. But you just keep going, move by move, and suddenly it's like, oh, yeah, white really is winning. So even the computers didn't really see it at first. Uh, and he ended up you know, not pulling the trigger and actually going through with it. So I do want to give the audience a chance. Uh, you know, what would be the, the winning plan here already? Which is it's sort of hard to imagine. And uh, you know, hopefully you guys have a lot of imagination and you're able to come up with it. Yeah. This is very similar. Yeah, so in the game, he played bishop c1 immediately. Uh, f6, and your idea here is just to go here. So if here, then you intended to play here? Yeah. And then you're going to put your queen here? So I guess I have to go like here or something? 
and then and then and then you're gonna go here and checkmate me. Okay, so very interesting idea. Uh, good thing I don't I don't have to go here. Uh, you know, you you can play here, and so this was analyzed. Yeah, f6 was the first idea, but yeah, Caruana said, okay, I intended to play bishop f8 here. And now it, it is mostly two. It's a plan. How would you mate that king? How can you rearrange your pieces to checkmate the black king here? It's not so easy. Do you have another idea? Okay, so you're going here. Where's your queen going? C1. Queen's going to c1, and then you put your bishop here, yeah. and you're gonna trade bishops and checkmate me. Mm -hmm. I do get a lot of moves though. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, if you yeah, if you get some free moves, I mean, because I, you know, I am also starting to like pick up your stuff. And, oh, and even if you go here, I'm just taking that. Okay, so you want to go all the way over here. Uh, I'm gonna try to take it. All right. I'm sure I have a defense here. I just have to figure it out. I suppose I can go here, check, and here. So do you want to you want to play rook? You play king h1. Would you like to trade? And I'm sure there's you know there's better defense here. But uh, okay, you're so you're slipping around. <laughs> you don't want to trade with me, Arjun? Okay, I agree with that. Uh, I don't know. Looks like I have some defense. If I play here, will you later play g4 and mate me? Yeah. Okay, then I won't do that. Because I gave you the idea. Okay, and something like this, though, too, there should be some defense here. And I'm, I'm sure if Caruana was here, he'd be like, no, 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 defense, 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 defense. Because uh, that's how the entire press conference was. But, okay, this, let's see, so this did happen, bishop f8. And now... Uh, the idea for white, which is quite brilliant, is h4, h5, and taking. Uh, then if you take with the f-pawn, sometimes you have to worry about this. So we can imagine we have to take back this way. And then we just need to get our, our queen to the h-file, you know, any way possible, knight here, checkmate. So that was his idea. So he, he thought about this move h4. And so in the press conference too, you know, he was playing white, Caruana was playing black. And he said, okay, yeah, but I just take this. And he was like, okay, yeah. And he's like, you know, what are you doing? You're just giving away all your pawns. Uh, but he's like, you know, I go here, I go here. Computer still says black, you know, starting, starting to realize, but it doesn't get it yet. Uh, queen b3, this, all, this is a very interesting way to do it. Pinning the knight, the queen's coming over. And, you know, he's like, okay, I go here. I prevent queen h3. And Aronian said, all right, I'll go here. And, okay, I'm going to go to the h file one way or the other. And he said, all right, I'll take this. Right, I'll just take stuff because I'm, you know, I'm a super grandmaster, so I just take all your stuff, and then you don't checkmate me. Uh, and here still the computer is like black's like better, but it no longer thinks black's winning. But, or sorry, that white's winning, but it'll, it'll realize in a second. And if queen h4, which seems like the most logical move, uh, is actually a mistake. Because after any move, when you play here, check. And we trade the queens, the black wins. So he had this, this clever move, queen h2. It's a very similar idea. The threat now is knight to g5. The computer's like, OK, it's equal, you know, no big deal. <laughs> you know, queen g4. And so this, you know, this was the line that the computer gives. It's a line that, you know, Super Grandmaster gives. But now, after this move, which even the computer doesn't see, even in this position, it didn't see it. But then you put it on there, and it's like, oh yeah, white's, white's just winning. And then, it, and then black gives away all of his pieces back. So, <laughs> and then he was here, and yet yeah, Caruana was like looking at it for a second, and he's like, oh yeah, that's checkmate. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. This is this is hard to stop without you know parting with your queen. You know, they, you know, the computer wants to like give this away, and then you sack your queen for the rook, and it's like, well, you know, it's only like plus ten for white or something. Uh, it's not checkmate. But yeah, so this this was it. But he ended up not going in for this variation, and it's you know, it's kind of 
It's one thing to see it too, but then it's another to actually go through with it in this position, you know, just because you are giving away all of your stuff. <laughs> if there is some defense that you're not seeing, you lose. Like, that's, that's the game. Um, but okay, I mean, it actually did work. <laughs> he could have done it. He could have uh, won a really important game. And, you know, then the press conference would have been much different. <laughs> Uh, but okay, we continue. And the game ended unspectacularly. Uh, after here, a few more moves. Uh, he took here. If you take here, then just rook d1. But after this very concrete move, well, you're preventing f6. But also after here, now you can take on d6. The point being um, that if you play rook d1, I can now just take this. And here I'd have two rooks for the queen and then, you know, a couple extra pawns and, you know, very nice position. So instead in this position, okay, we went here, attacking the rook, and, and we got a draw. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I guess they were, they were done. You know, we played the Benoni, we had our fun. <laughs> it's a draw. So, yeah, you know, an opportunity missed, perhaps by Aronian. Uh, would have been a very exciting game, but, uh, but okay. You know, and if you can play this against Aronian in a you know, candidates game, <laughs> and then you're sitting out there and you're telling me like, no, this is baloney. It's like, what? I mean, <laughs> like, what? if Caruana can play it. <laughs> uh, okay, we, we return. So that was a brief interview, uh, yeah, interlude into the classical variation. So let's look one more time here about the immediate knight to f3 in this position. And in most lines, what black is trying to do is to put his bishop here. But if he goes there immediately, this is actually a mistake. So if you were white, what would you guys play in this position? H3. H3, OK. And in the immortal words of Mike Cummer, I wasn't bluffing. I'm not bluffing. And, and that's a joke only Ben Simon will get. And so this was sort of my strategic point. I, I, you know, I, I, yeah, you can take back. I was intending on just taking your knight. So it's the same, too, if you play bishop to e2. I'm not bluffing. I just take it. And when black realizes his strategic goal, which was preventing that knight, that knight usually is quite good over here on c4. My bishop usually isn't doing all that much. I get that you know bishops are generally better than knights. But in this exact position, that is the trade I did want to make. So OK, I mean, how are you going to stop me from realizing my goal? Which one? Bishop check. Bishop check. OK. I will go here. I still intend to take your knight. And perhaps this will help me out, because maybe I can play here a lot faster now. So not quite. It is generally in black's favor to trade, you know, especially all the minor pieces, and get into any major piece ending. And the reason is it's really easy for him to make a pass pawn on the queen side with his majority over here. And white, if he ever makes a pass pawn, it's going to be in the center. And so in a king and pawn ending, you know, just a, a pure ending there, uh, it's actually the fact that they're outside is actually quite useful usually for black. So in black's interest, if we could just take all the minor pieces off the board in this position, uh, he'd be happy to do it. And then he should be better, uh, which is sort of a, an interesting fact about the position. Um, so I'm not really afraid of trading too much stuff. But the key move here. Queen to a4. Uh, this, this disrupts me a little bit. If I block with a knight, well, now you have time to move your knight to d2. And black has to be a little bit careful that he doesn't lose his bishop. If, on the other hand, you go with the bishop, we can move our queen to any useful square. I don't know, b3. Queen c2 also is probably fine. And OK, you got to defend this pawn. And then I can, I can still realize my middle game plan of, of maneuvering my knight around. So black goes back to this position. You know, okay, you got to come up with a little, little cunning way. Maybe I can get away with, with bishop to g4. And you actually have this interesting move, a6, with the positional threat, b5. And white almost automatically stops this. And now you can just go through with the maneuver. And there's, there's no queen a4 check. So this is very clever. And yeah, if you go here, I'm not bluffing. I, I take your knight. Uh, so very good. And then you know this is just sort of a, a small strategical success 
for black. And this knight usually is, is very good, the knight that can go to c4, both for checkmating attacks and pressure on the center and, and stopping all sorts of black's counterplay. So this, this has been a small success for black, the opening. Which is why some players with white, you know, they've approached this position from a slightly different angle. They say, okay, if I play knight f3 immediately, he'll play a6 and bishop g4, and maybe I can be a little bit more cunning as white. And players have played moves such as bishop d3. h3 is likely to transpose. You can play h3 and then knight f3. Um, but we'll, we'll just cover the, the more popular line, even though h3 scores like a lot better. A lot better, even though it always transposes. So it's kind of strange. Um, and now, yeah, so you know, now this, this move doesn't make as much sense when I don't have a knight here. So here, and we're going to look at the main move tonight will be h3. However, I do want to briefly mention this uh, maneuver. And uh, although this opening doesn't really have a name, it's kind of like the, the Shamish King's Indian, where white would have already played f3. But white is trying to play without f3, so he can play f4 in one go. So he's just going to castle, put his knight here, and, and you know f4, the queen comes in, etc. So it's a very scary and dangerous position. And I want to show you a game, but the computer's going to make me go all the way back to the start, because the opening was a little bit different. But this is the game between Lund and Hilla Pearson from Denmark, uh, 2010. And you know, for time, we'll, we'll go rather quickly. I just want to get to one key point. So a very interesting transposition to uh, the opening that we were just looking at. Um, and OK, knight f6, we castle, castle. And so here was sort of the point after some normal moves. You know, whenever they play a6, they pretty much play a4. And black goes on, preventing. You know, you'll notice this. These are the maneuvers that black plays almost every time. White's getting on with his maneuvers. So here he comes. You know, he's going to get all his pieces out and, and really attack you. Uh, so here. And what I like about this game is it seems like black really understood the position. And he took what was the most popular move, and he really improved upon it. So the most popular move in this position is queen c7. And black intends to get some queenside play. For example, after queen f3, you push. And then we get our rook in. And next move, we play b5. And you get some normal position for this variation. However, in this game, black was very clever. And he said, I'll just play rook b8 and play the position without queen to c7. White went on with the same thing. b5. OK, it's a sacrifice. And he took. And these are the kinds of sacrifices you do want to look for, because you just want to open the queen side up at, at all costs before white does anything in the center and, and crushes you. And another very good move, c4. Uh, yeah, fantastic stuff. I mean, white, white should take it. What's going on? Black took here. And white already made a very costly blunder. He should just move his bishop back to d3, e2, you know, probably bishop d3. But he took this, which is actually a mistake, because now what did white, uh, black play? Rook takes, yeah. And this already is very good for black. And after taking, hopefully, we see check, and we pick up the bishop. It is. It is like a yeah, King's Indian, because it's a lot like the same-ish. You know, except for they played f4 in one go instead of having to play f3 and slow play it and then eventually play f4. So yeah, it is, it is you know, almost directly a transposition to a King's Indian. It's White's hoping for an improved version. And here already he's in trouble. So I mean, we'll go through the rest of the game, even though it's not as important. But OK. He traded here, and, and black's just better. It's a very strange imbalance here. Another nice move, h5. I want to play h4 and undermine your control over e4. Uh, so he went for it. I mean, he has to do something active. Uh, this, this doesn't work, but he should try something. So he went in for this sacrifice. All right, and black was happy to trade. And after a few you know, really nice moves, eventually he got to a position where we traded, and his opponent had had enough. So that actually, the sacrificing on the queen side, even when it you know, gives away a pawn initially, 
are the kinds of things that you want to look for in these positions, especially with black. Uh, you want to get you know, counterplay as quickly as possible, which often means you need to sacrifice. So here was really nice, the idea C4, with the idea now of taking back and you, you can't take or we, we take and, and check and pick up the piece. So, uh, so it's a very interesting system. It, it is quite dangerous, but uh, for time, and we, we'll have to go all the way back or the computer won't, won't accept what I want it to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll go back to this position. And instead of knight g to e2, We'll look at the main line here, which is h3. And after castling knight f3, this is the modern main line. So this is what you can kind of expect in all of your games, um, except for not in my experience. Nobody ever plays this. <laughs> they always play like weird stuff. You know, the people, when I play people, they, you know, they like to play e4 and f4, and they want to crush you. Because when white plays against this, and you know, even Aronian in the press conference, he was like, oh, yeah, you can play the Benoni against me every time. Yeah, I welcome the challenge. Yeah, please always play this. Uh, which is also funny because Fabiano was like, yeah, I've been trying for months to play this. Nobody's ever allowed it. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'll allow it every time. Uh, <laughs> uh, so normally when I play this, you know, white just tries to crush you immediately, whether it works or not. And here there's actually two moves. The most common move and the most striking is B5. Uh, you know, it's, it looks the nicest. And so this obviously is the kind of thing you're, you're looking for. But there's one practical downside for club players. It's a draw. <laughs> it's all been worked out. Very, very complicated lines. Sometimes black is just very slightly worse. And so at least a very complicated game where black is you know, just trying to draw. So this is perfect uh, if you want to study some of the end games that arise after these positions so that you can get draws against higher rated players. But my suspicion is that 99% of the people that watch my videos are playing you know, in the two on two team championship and you know, they're playing 1200s and they want to win every game. So it's not you know, super useful perhaps for the crowd. So we'll go kind of quickly even though this is the main main line. And we will examine some of the, the consequences. Uh, there's two ways to take on b5. The most common is knight takes, in, which is probably the best. But this also leads to an end game almost by force. Uh, but I mean, what is Black's next move? I mean, I will challenge the class. What's, what's the point of this? You know, thanks. I took your b pawn. Yeah, excellent. Knight takes e4. This is the tactical justification. And so after knight takes, because if you don't, I'm taking on c3, which could be problematic. Check. And OK, you can't play knight to c3 because bishop takes c3. So you have to play here, and we take this bishop, preventing castling. You can take on d6. You can play here, which is better than queen d3. And you'll, they'll protect their knight, and now they can castle. And in positions like this, there's lots of uh, different moves. This is a move that trades a lot. This is a move that trades a lot. And they all lead to like different end games. And they're very, you know, you can study these and it would only take you, I don't know. I don't know how long it takes you guys to study, but a night, a week, you know, a month. And then you could play this and you could get all sorts of draws with high rated players and, and feel great about yourself. Um, if that's, that's the kind of thing you want to do. But uh, OK, it's not, it's not for most people, I don't think. But we will return to this position. And we'll look at here, which is white's better try. And here, there's already an interesting question for black. Uh, we have this tactic. We can take here and then play rook e8. Or we can play rook e8 first and then take on e4. And I'll ask the audience, uh, which way would you guys prefer? Because there's a, a modern consensus. Yeah. Yeah, which is correct. Uh, rook e8 first is correct, though understanding why is very difficult. <laughs> I mean, here, this looks great. OK, and, and now I, I play rook e8. And it's worth noting this move, which also seems crazy and complicated. The point being, you can go back, and then I take here. But uh, I mean, now, if you take on c3, I play bishop d2. So here, in something like this, should actually be quite good for white if white finds the move knight to g5. And the point is, after you retreat, I can go here, and then I, I can go here, and your dark squares are weak. Um, so this actually is really good for white. But going back, I don't have to check you with the queen. I can just play rook e8. 
But now this move knight g5. So for a long time, this, this was unknown. White was castling or, or playing something else. But this move sort of uh, caused a lot of problems for black. And what's interesting is, OK, now we should play here. After this, there's a sacrifice that actually occurs in a lot of lines in the Benoni. Uh, the idea is when you have a pawn here and your knight can go to e6, there's often the sacrifice. Because taking opens up the black king, immediately there's some interference. And best line is to check, take, uh, take again, and try not to let him castle. And you can even go into this end game, which is kind of shocking because it's, you know, the best move here is actually here. If you take here, white gets a good position just after taking. I'm, you know, I'm attacking the rook on a8. Okay, but I take here and you're pinned. You can go here, and I don't want to lose my, my rook, so I can sacrifice. But this end game should be slightly better for white. Um, and OK, so I mean, yeah, he can go here. But if you ever take this, then one of my rooks comes over, and I start taking stuff too. Uh, and just the king is a little bit closer, and white can get his rooks in faster. So you, you can play this way, and then you know, you're know you like a little bit, little bit better as white. Um, but returning to uh, Arjun's move which is the better move. I'm um, sorry, if we just go back to the knight takes line. Rook e8, uh, this, is, this is the best move. And normally they castle, though they have tried here where both of these captures are actually quite interesting. Um, and they're both complicated and you can study this forever. But uh, rook e8 castles, and we'll just show the theoretically best moves. And uh, in a position like this, OK, and you go back, or you can play here. Um, going back also leads to some interesting play, but OK, for time, we'll just show this, this line. And if, if you're interested in, in playing these you know, crazy, wild, complicated lines, uh, I, I encourage you to do it. You know, they're very, very sharp. And this is like all forced and been played before. So <laughs> uh, you know, we could go through this for hours and hours, but uh, and, you know, equal. Uh, that, so that's, that's, that's the consensus, which is why I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to you know, really sit here and <laughs> focus all of our attention on the move b5. I will show, though, there's also the modern main line with, instead of b5, the move a6. And this is more complicated, and you know, it's not completely worked out to a draw yet. So uh, this is worth playing. And now after a4, the almost automatic response, uh, we can check out this move, which was played in a game. Um, but I'll have, to, I'll have to figure out what the game was. Just give me just a second. Uh, there, was, there was a game between Leboyevic and Topalov from 2003 that I want to finish the, the day with here. And this game was played in, in uh, the Amber Rapid Blind Tournament. So both players were blindfolded, and, and they're playing really fast. So mistakes were made. But when these people are blindfolded and they're playing really fast, they make mistakes that most club players play you know, just regularly you know, with their eyes open and lots of time. In that game, rook e8 was played. So this is what we'll, we'll check out. It is worth mentioning the main line here in this version, which could be very similar to what, what the game was. And again, black goes about maneuvering his pieces to prevent the e5 push. That's, that's what he does. And after here, you know, you're attacking the pawn. You can defend it. And what's interesting here is you'll notice in this line, the bishop has had time to retreat. That'll be a little bit different than our game. And, you know, okay, so the main line just continues, and they take, and, you know, all sorts of stuff like this happens. So this is just sort of generally the, the main line. So we'll try to understand now, let's see if we can go back to the game where rook e8 was played, which is also a very common move and very sensible. And after castling, he went here. You could also have played here and transposed to the main line. But this is a very interesting idea that I also wanted to highlight. The move knight to h5 is often very useful for a black, and in some lines they actually play it really, really early in the variation, which has the key point that you're preventing the bishop from going to f4. And especially when they've already played h3, sometimes they haven't played h3, so you wait to do it until they put their bishop on f4. But now if the bishop gets to go to f4, it'll have a retreat square. 
So playing this immediately makes a lot of sense. And in response to this move that was played in the game, you have this idea, bishop to f6, which may seem a little abnormal if you're unfamiliar with the variation, because normally when you, know, you have your, your bishop here that's fianchettoed and awesome, you don't think about trading it away. And I even know there was one player that used to come to the club all the time. He was 1,600. And, and when he had this bishop, he would never trade it away for anything, like nothing. Uh, especially, like, sometimes there's a rook hanging here. He's like, you know, like, you know if it's, you take the rook and they take with the queen, even if it's the best move, he would never do it. You know, he was really, he was really dogmatic about keeping that, that bishop. He's like, oh, it's worth a lot more than a rook. And even in a rated game, uh, I was playing against him. And I knew that like, if he took my rook, it was some position like that where he could take a rook and I'd take back and be, just be down in exchange. But I played it against him because I knew he'd never take it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so I won that game. Yeah, he didn't take it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, in, it's actually quite normal. If white does decide to chop it in this position here, we can go here and there's actually some black squares that black might be able to exploit. So, okay, white can, can trade these bishops, but now the knight's going to f4. Um, although looking at this now, what happens if white goes here? Now I'm, then I'm confused. Mm. All right, because I'm thinking about like this, which I assume is like fine, but it's, it's an interesting idea, I guess. But yeah, okay, so that, these sort of complicated things might happen. Uh, in the game, though, they... Okay, I thought, I thought they repeated a whole bunch of times here, but I guess not. He went back, and uh, now here, just the normal move. And there's another interesting I idea that happens here. After g4, I have to fianchetto my knight, which is sort of strange. And I probably wouldn't have done what white did now. He played g5, which makes uh, certain people shake their heads in the audience. Um, I would probably keep my pawn here because now my knight can't go anywhere. But he pushed. And this is a, is a very interesting decision that black has to make. You know, where do you want to put your bishop? In the game, he went to e7, which is, is decent. But there is always this idea to keep in mind in these sorts of positions and in the Benoni in general. The idea of, of putting your bishop on d4 even when it's a sacrifice. This is sort of a recurring tactical theme that might happen. And okay, maybe you're saying... Well, what happens if I just snatch this, right? I mean, that seems to make a lot of sense. Um, but if you take back here, you've undefended your g-pawn. And you can actually go here, and then, you know, if we trade, the end game's actually you know, quite equal, but perhaps I should play queen h6 and not trade and make sure my knight can always get out. Um, but something like this should just be equal and, and perfectly playable. And it's just sort of an idea that will recur in these, these lines. But he went back. And, okay, he dropped his bishop back, you know, because black's about to play knight to e5. And black immediately undermines the king side. And I think black is starting to think, I kind of want to get at that loose king. You know, maybe the white king is, is going to be weak in some of these positions. And here he probably should have just played the move h4 and kept that pawn there. Because it's really restricting some of the, the black pieces. But he took. And you see, you have to decide how you want to take back, and one way is a lot better than the other. Um, it's all about controlling e5. That's what black's play is all about. So yeah, I assume that gave you the answer? Yeah. Yeah, because if knight takes, you have to worry about e5, um, such sacrifices. But just keeping control over e5 is the, is the way to go here. Now, he went back, which is a bit of a mistake. He's obviously going to see four. That's his main plan in this whole opening. But he is running away from the king. There's, there's not a lot of defense. Will black be able to muster up enough soldiers to go in and attack white? Bishop d4. And here white again made a mistake. He just played knight to c4. Um, interestingly enough, he should probably just go back to f3, even if... It's initially, you know, a sacrifice. Your know, computer's like, you know, you need some pieces by your king. Uh, another interesting mistake that wasn't played is taking, uh, which will highlight some of the things that are going on in this position. Well, there's not a great place for your knight to retreat now. So something like this, you know, even if you just saw this, you'd be like, oh, okay, this doesn't make a lot of sense. 
And then the combination of knight to e5 and queen to h4 lead to a very promising attack for black. And if here, which is a mistake, um, I would like to challenge the class to one more, one more little tactical puzzle here. What is the only winning move for black? There's only one. Yeah, excellent. Bishop h3. And the point is, if you take here, double question mark. Yeah, queen g5. And do you have what it takes to checkmate me? Who can checkmate me? Check, check, with, the check with the rook. Check with the rook. You can, you can do faster. You can do even faster. Here, you know, you're letting me block a little bit, and I'm, i got to start to run away. Don't let me run away, Arjun. Queen h4. Queen h4. Excellent move. And, yeah, now you're getting mated. That's checkmate. You got a question? Okay, so Arjun did not come up with that idea on his own, okay? He heard it from the audience. Uh, he's a, you're very honest, though. That's good. Um, so going back, okay, he didn't, he didn't take the bishop. He played knight to c4. But, okay, you're running away from the king. So now the knight jumps in here. You know, question mark. And we'll, we'll get to the, the conclusion here. He took, took back with the queen, question mark. Yeah, everybody's shaking their heads. Uh, how could they play so bad? Aren't they looking at the board? Uh, okay, check. And here, you know, a fantastic finish was missed, which is understandable because this, this is really hard. <laughs> uh, so this, this is probably the hardest tactic to find in the whole lecture. So I'll give you one more chance, and you at home can pause your video. Uh, we'll see if anybody here in the audience is... Uh, Imaginative enough to come up with the, the right solution here. Queen f4. You checked me. Why did you check me? I hate getting checked. I don't know. I guess I go here. Unless, except for this was played in the game. And he, okay, he went, he went to g2. Uh, we're looking, if you're just joining us, for an amazing tactic. Yeah, Danny Machuka. Danny Machuka. Okay, so I, I take. And here again, you have to find a, another really brilliant move. Um, does anybody other than Danny see the, the brilliant follow-up? Yeah. Knight h5. Uh, and this just leads to <laughs> bad news. This is obviously a big threat. And even if you, uh, you take this, I still have a queen and knight, so I should be able to checkmate you. Something like this, and okay, where if you go here, queen h3, and I guess any, anywhere else, you're you're just getting mated. Um, okay, so that would just lead directly to mate. Uh, but that was missed. I know you must think it's embarrassing, but they were blindfolded, so give them a break, you know. Yeah, that's okay. So in the game, y your move was played, queen f4, and then I guess they're pros, so they repeated a little bit, and then black played this move, which. It's bad, but he still has a nice position. Uh, so he missed the immediate knockout. The rook comes in. All right, we got some, some defense. He's just going to use all his pieces. He's going to bring his other rook in. Uh, and in this position, he took. And black missed a very nice win. Instead, he, he just took this. Uh, but he could have done this check, which wins immediately. Because if here you take this... And if you go to h1, then queen f3 followed by mate. And if you go here, I can take your rook. I can even play rook to f8. Um, but okay, taking your rook is, is sufficient. And instead, he took the bishop. Also, this is very good for black. Uh, he went here, 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 question mark. And one last move you need to find if you want to win this game. Okay, we are out of time, so I'll give you the very last one. You can, you can pause at home if you, you want to solve it by yourself. But in this position, black, play bishop to g4. I mean, yeah, so yeah, if you, you can't really take the bishop. And I'm about to play bishop to f3. So he played f3 himself. But, okay, the simplest taking was played. And now uh, you have to find one more move, but I think for these players that even with their eyes closed, it's sort of routine. You can win material by checking. 
and, and trading lots of stuff. So here White resigned without trading queens or anything. But uh, yeah, so it was just, hopefully that showed you some of the, the common ideas here in the, the main line of the modern Benoni. As I said, next week, we will go over the Fianchetto variation. And hopefully, if his parent is okay with it, we'll have Arjun here tomorrow night. Um, we've got a very special deal for Arjun. So hopefully we see you guys tomorrow night. And until then, like, share, subscribe. And uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out.